What do Lorena, the Sunken Kingdom Shrines, and this pesky gold hoarder have to do with each other? Turns out they hold the key to unlocking one of the few curses available to all pirates in Sea of Thieves, the Curse of Sunken Sorrow. Waking up in the tavern to start another session on the seas, I decided that today I was going to do something that I had been putting off for some time. You see, in order to unlock the curse, you need to complete the Legend of the Sunken Kingdom quest, purchased from Lorena for 50 blue doubloons. Now, that's not a terrible price to pay, but to be able to purchase the mission, you needed to have been awarded the Mysteries of the Sunken Kingdom Commendation. What does that entail? Glad you asked. The Mysteries of the Sunken Kingdom Commendation has you finding secrets across the game's Sunken Kingdom Shrines, five in each of the six shrines for a total of 30 secrets. And what do these secrets look like? Journals! That's right, you've got to find 30 journals across the six shrines in order to unlock the ability to purchase the mission to get the curse. Understand why I've been putting this off? Honestly, the most difficult part is getting to each of the shrines, which are spread out across the map. There's also the fact that the journals are not individually recognized in the commendations beyond shrine location. So if you happen to miss one in one of the shrines, chances are you'll be touching all the journals in that shrine again just to make sure. Popping the voyage onto my captain's table, I took a look at what the quest had given me. First, let's take a look at this note here. Turns out the gold holder representative over at Sanctuary Outpost, Humphrey, had written a note to someone about the location of a buried chest. Actually, Humphrey's a pretty popular NPC as he's got his own little backstory as part of the Sea of Thieves Origins graphic novel. The only other tool that we had was going to be a golden wayfinder similar to the one used during Treasure Vault quests. Instead of it leading to pieces of map, however, it was going to lead us to this buried chest, but not before we would be rudely interrupted by our first skeleton ship encounter, not just a few minutes after leaving the outpost. This would be more of a delay than anything else, really, but normally I don't like attracting too much attention with cannon fire when I'm trying to complete a commendation, especially one that will require me to leave my ship behind by itself, as you'll see in a bit. That being said, of course I grabbed the loot before making my way over to the Crooked Masts, where we would dig up the necessary buried chest, the Forbidden Coral Chest. Now, this chest requires three keys to unlock, so now it was vital that we ensure that we keep this chest secure, because unlike Tall Tales, there are no checkpoints in this mission. If you sink, you're done, and we'll have to repurchase the mission to start all over again, and I did not want to do that. The Wayfinder Compass next directed me to the nearby Isle of Sharktooth Key, where another note from Humphrey revealed that a scholar's note on the location of the needed keys was buried here. Luckily, Sharktooth is such a small island that I was able to dig up the notes with ease, but then immediately had to deal with ocean crawlers spawning up from the sands. Seriously, if it wasn't for the potential of gems dropping, I'd never even fight these things. Turns out we're on our way to the Shrine of Hungering for the location of the first key. And for those of you who haven't had the time to take a gander at these shrines, I admit they are each beautiful in their own way. I love the way the coral deposits on the ocean floor give off that luminescent light, and the decorative seaweed is just wonderful. But personally, I normally steer clear of these shrines for the reason I mentioned earlier. For every minute that I'm down here in this shrine, and in any shrine, that's another minute that another player could be bearing down on my ship with full sails, and I just cannot afford to sink here. Now at the highest level of this shrine, I encountered the door with the gold hoarder symbol on it and followed the instructions of the riddle, proceeding to follow the trail of gold coins that had been strewn about the shrine. Eventually, they ended at a point on the spine of a skeleton where we found the gold hoarder medallion and opened up the door, revealing the first forbidden chest key and the next set of notes from a nameless scholar. The first key now set in place inside the chest, I took a look at the next set of notes for the quest, revealing that the Shrine of Ocean's Fortune was our next destination. And now I regretted taking on this quest. Here's the thing. I understand the intention is to have each shrine act differently when it comes to how to complete them. It's necessary in order to make each one feel unique and able to be repeated without feeling overdone. Man, did it really have to be the Ocean's Fortune one? It's all about pulleys, platforming, and parkour around this shrine. One misstep and you can fall to the bottom of it and have to start all over again. It took all of my concentration 
to make sure I didn't time a jump incorrectly, especially when getting to the rotating platforms. Finally, I managed to snag the second gold hoarder key to unlock the secret door and grab the second forbidden key. I thought for sure someone was going to be barreling down on me with the amount of time I had spent fumbling with all the different mechanisms of the shrine down here, so I was preparing myself for the worst when respawning back on my ship. But we got lucky, no doubt about it. I inserted the second key into the forbidden chest and took a look at the scholar's notes for the location of the third and final key, the Shrine of Ancient Tears. A dense fog soon enveloped our ship as we traveled. Honestly, preferable at this point, so close to the final reward. On the way to the shrine, I noticed there was a sloop in the vicinity of Plunder Outpost, which wasn't too far from our destination. We would have to keep an eye on the blast my mast, since if it was selling at Sovereigns at this moment, the crew of that ship would have little to lose in coming after me, especially if they saw my ship stationary squatting on a shrine's light. Turns out I was double unlucky, as there was a brig parked right next to us over at Devil's Ridge. Luckily, I saw the gold coins on the ground immediately on entering the shrine, so it was just a matter of following them to the location of the medallion and unlocking the third secret door to grab the last key needed to unlock the chest. Great news for me, sitting between a sloop and a brig, so I quickly teleported back to the ship. Taking a look around, I saw that the sloop was still a plunder outpost, while the brig was nowhere to be seen, but at least it wasn't coming in my direction. I felt safe enough to grab the last key from the mermaid and open up the forbidden chest. And what was our reward? Uh, a stone tablet? Turns out this was another key for a secret location back inside the Shrine of Ancient Tears. This time, we carried this key down the shrine and found its corresponding hole to place it in. The sound of doors opening could be heard, and what was revealed? The final resting place of the scholar turned part coral and the last notes in their journal. After reading through their final words, we unlocked the curse of the Sunken Kingdom commendation, and with that, the curse of Sunken Sorrow for our pirate to wear proudly, a testament to the work done today. I do enjoy the look of the Curse of Sunken Sorrow quite a bit, and I appreciate that these curses are cosmetics that are thus far only earnable through in-game playtime and achievements. I hope that never changes. Now, there are still several more curses that I need to unlock, but that'll be for another time. Until the next adventure, this is John Bardcore signing out, saying so long and take care.